friends. This is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing. Welcome to Smash That Small Pad. This is a collaboration with Bourbon Creek Crafts here on YouTube and Stampin' Cat on Instagram. Beth and Kathy and I every month pick a pad from our stash and we smash it. And it needs to be, you know, eight by eight or smaller. It could be a partial. It's just, you don't run out and buy one to smash. You're clearing your stuff out. I had Betsy's Couture from Kaiser Craft. I think this came to me from Mary and Eugene. And these Kaiser Craft pads are kind of cool because they have not just cut aparts, but they also have like punch outs and stuff. So you'll see that. I'll show you as we go through. Very specific kind of vintage looking paper. I made 13 cards, a baker's dozen, and a bunch of journal stuff. And there is some process video for later. I don't know when that'll come out. This is what I have left for scraps. Sometimes I feel like I do these in a giant hurry. This one, I feel this is smashed and I got down to it. Last night when I was completely done with all the paper and I had some scraps, I sat down and watched TV and I'll show you what I made with some of those because I have more in this box right here. The boxes are because it's kitten safe. Sorry about the glare. For my cards, I did use white card bases because that's what I have and uh, that's what I'm going with these days. I got into my stamps a little bit because I was trying to figure out what do I want to do with these papers? I don't want to make really specific cards that I never use. Well-behaved women rarely make history and I thought that was fun with these vintage papers. And the pad had some embossing or sheen on some of the papers. So the green has some fun texture on it. Happy birthday. This was one of my last cards. I was down to the wire. And I couldn't figure out what to stamp on or use. So I got out my white pad that probably two years ago, I was sure I absolutely had to have. And I will say, if you're going to have a white pad, Hero Arts one is pretty fabulous, but you don't need one. <laughs> Uh, so I got that out. I kind of like the fun white with the really vintage papers, almost like a chalkboard look on that navy. The best of times were spent with you. This is an example of the punch outs in the pad. These cut aparts, I would have used this in a pet journal, but that's probably about the only thing I would have used. And I liked the shape of it, so I made this card with it. And again, you can see the brown paper has some sheen and the clocks do too, and then so does the green. So there's a lot going on, even though it's vintage papers. Life is better with you. Could not figure out what to do with these cut aparts, so went with a circle. I love this paper with this mm, violety blue and this green, love it. Happy anniversary. Again, down to the end, had these scraps. This is a manila file folder that I stamped uh, Versafine on. The color got weird. My normal vintage sepia, very nice chocolatey brown. Got kind of greenish brown on there. I'm okay with that. I was thinking super gender neutral anniversary card. Almost even maybe for like a work anniversary. I cut the heart out of the middle of the stamp. I know that freaks some of you out, but... I'm confessing. I didn't do that in the process video, so you didn't get to see that part. Just a note, that one's popped up with a bit of foam. And this one I didn't make in the video either. I made this the day before when I was talking with friends. So I've got some like raffia or cord right here and a uh, punch out from the pad. And then look at the sheen. These papers are cool. I said a prayer for you today. I get a lot of requests uh, for purchases of cards with the stamp. So I used it quite a few times and I love these papers. I think they lend themselves to anything. Thinking of you, this pad has a million of these faces. So you're going to see a whole bunch of different heads. I use my deckle edge scissors. I don't know if you really notice it, but it goes well with the paper. This was a cut apart from the pad that I didn't know what to do with. A scrap. Life is better with friends. I do send like friendship cards and I would send those to you guys. So those I use. Another happy birthday. This was the first one. This was a scrap that was literally like the size of the stamp. And I was testing the white and it worked so well I actually got to use that. So I made two. And love these. This paper, eh, it doesn't speak to me, but man, I love that one. Another, I said a prayer for you today. I started this in the process video, so you'd know my secret about it if you watch that. 
I did go back and cut this circle slightly smaller because this piece of paper was like the only scrap that was big enough to make a circle from. And so I made that, I said a prayer for you one size smaller. Thinking of you, just sort of a junky collage card. This was in the cut aparts. This was a piece of ephemera that I didn't like the end of it and I wanted something to stamp on. So I stamped thinking of you. This is washi on ephemera with some more washi and then one of the girls inked and over the top of it. Kind of fun. And Zelda kept stealing that washi tape, but I kept taking it back. Thanks. Completely gender neutral thank you card. And has that cool texture. Did the deck ledge. The brown and this thanks. The thanks were, it was already in my stash. And I was just trying to use it. The color of the front is really good for this. The blue's a stretch. I think I should have made the brown a little narrower or done a better layout. I mean, it works for a guy, but it's not an exciting card. Okay, then I was just making ephemera because I was thinking for vintage journals or junky journals, this would work. These are scrap-based, and I don't know how many of these are in my process video, but they are very often the size of the scrap of paper. Here I have a pocket of the textury paper in the back and then the lacy one. This is a cut apart. This is the snippet end of the cut apart from when I made something else. Uh, one of the girls. I fussy cut these girls at a basketball game for like hours. Then pieces of ephemera from it and I've notched it there. Then here I was inspired by, there was a video I watched one day and a lady was making uh, scrap pockets. There's another one here somewhere. I don't know where it is. And she was layering them and I got out my junk box and then I don't think I ever made any, but that's what I was doing. These were just one inch strips and I glued the edges together almost like you would Franken paper. I didn't have a base layer, but I went through and glued them. And then I imagine it going like this and it'll be a pocket behind. It could also be a journal card and go in a pocket. This would be a little annoying to write on, but you could. And the way I went, left to right, it would work. So pocket, inked the edges, used a bunch of scraps, and then ephemera cut down, and then another scrap. These are cute, but they're missing a layer because I ran out of paper. Here, we'll put this one in here so you can see. So a pocket here, a pocket here, and then like this one has a lot of different color and could go in something else. So I'm not too worried that I ran out of paper and don't have anything in it. This one has little ephemera pieces, same idea. I did show you how I made these. These scraps are very small that make them. Again, scraps and uh, this is a pocket. Everything's a pocket pretty much. Pocket, pocket, she's not a pocket. Bit of washi tape and one of those inked up girls. And then the embossing is just cool, isn't it? We could emboss, but we forget, right? Timeless moments. This one's a journaling card. It says memories right there. I absolutely love these two papers. And then I, I think I would probably put more here when I put it in the journal, but it kind of depends. Also depends on if I'm finishing it out for me or sending it to someone to work on. Uh, this is glued down, but I didn't actually ever put anything on it because the smallest ephemera really that I had to work with was these girls and it just didn't work shape wise. This is a bit of one of the ends that I put on there. I didn't let anything get away. And this is a piece of ephemera, inked edges, one of the girls on it. These are white on the back. Some of them I inked the edges of to soften it. Some of them I probably got distracted. Remember I was talking and stuff. This was one of the punch outs and I inked the edges, but I really didn't let anything get away. So when I snip off the ends, I reuse it on something else. This is a big pocket, goes on a journal page. It's a little unstable right now, but you would glue the edge and then you have these three pockets. Same here, just a bigger version. Uh, this one will fill pretty much the whole page. This one will be narrow or you could have lace or something next to it. And this one is a little more stable because I used full pieces. They weren't like scrappy scraps. Oh, except I didn't glue the end. Eh, maybe I should do that. Maybe I have a creative idea there, so I'm not gonna rush to glue it. I'll think about it. If this was higher, I could make it a pocket from both sides or something. So it's just rounded corners, inked edges, notched out, and then laid down to the point that I like the look, not even measured. 
Okay, this one, scrappy scrap, scrap. This was literally a cut off from one of the others, one of the girls, and then ephemera. You know, I like to cut, they are, come as rectangles and I like to chop them down to different sizes when I can. Our collection of beautiful moments. This would probably go somewhere else in the journal when the dust settles. This one, I was thinking journaling card, and then I, as I was laying out for the video, I was like, oh, this would have been a fun birthday card or something too. I could have put something here. And then this is the one I stamped the candle on the back of in the video. I never used the keys, I got sidetracked. Okay, this one, this is how I'm imagining this. Uh, not in this journal, but just bear with me, okay? Yes, this journal is still for sale. I just never listed it. Okay. Um, Let's put on a tea dyed page. It makes more sense there. So what I'm thinking is put it here, glue, glue. It's a pocket here, or you could just glue at the bottom and it would still be a top pocket. You get to see this beautiful pocket. Then on the other side, it would be like this. I would probably decorate this side more because it would be a little plain. It would also be a great place to stamp a sentiment like, ooh, look at this one. One who sleeps under a quilt is comforted by love. This is a great stamp, but... I might need to take it off the block. It fights me. Anyway, so that's what these are. And there's um, two of them. This one, because I just love her and she's navy and wonderful. This one, because I got tired of cutting those out. So same idea. This one will look cool, really, either side of the page. And then I use this other navy girl for one of these pockets. And I put time is what brought us together up here. And it's inked around the edges. So that's all my big ephemera, right? Then, and some of those I did make sitting on the couch, but these I left in a box because they were just too small. They wander off. This is the ephemera that I have left or the faces. So like in some of those where I don't have anything in the pockets, I could circle back and put a couple of these. And I didn't glue anything down here because I thought this would be cute to stamp on. I put a girl on one of these, but on another one I thought, I mean, I could put a teacup with a rose in it, or I could put a cute little sentiment, something. But I like to stamp on the ephemera that has that big, empty middle edge. just hadn't thought of it. You can watch the process video, and I'll explain it. But pocket, pocket, pocket. And same concept, just different shape and size. And all the little pockets are loaded with stuff. These are ephemera pieces from the thing. This isn't supposed to be in here. It just got stuck. So these are big, long uh, cut-aparts punch outs they were punch outs with the little tabbies and I love this a lifetime of memories and then a bit of a punch out and one of the girls and it's a three-way pocket this one literally tiny scraps right this is a piece of paper that I rounded just nipped the corners on that vintage look then I loved her but I couldn't decide what to do with her so I left her unstamped and then treasured memories so this can go on a pocket down at the bottom. Don't forget to make really fun little ephemera. There's no rule that, you know, you watch videos and people make like page size stuff and pockets, but it's nice to put these down on this. Maybe not a pink page, imagine it differently. And then you glue right here, two sides. So you have this pocket and then behind it, you'll have a nice pocket right here, or you can just glue three sides and have the top. But little kind of fun things they make it interesting scraps scraps right this was a book page that was one of those and then it was in my thing bit of paper that i tore off and then put her next to um here i kept doing pockets that went this way so i reminded myself and made one directional it'll be a pocket behind it'll be a pocket right there and then the three girls and see some of them were embossed too Another little tiny, tiny, like on a pocket page. And then I have a little brown scrap in there. So you get the idea again. Uh, this one literally was just, you know, two pieces of paper that work together. This would go probably in the upper right hand corner of a page. You'd glue it as an L or glue here, glue here. Then it's a pocket behind. It's a tuck spot right here. And you'd be amazed. Things stay in a tuck spot at the upper part of the page because it's tight. This one, I don't know, I went nuts. These are punch outs from the page. So scrap with rounded corners, punch out, we're getting blurry, what's going on there? There, punch out, 
punch out and then a tiny scrap. So I've got three pieces of paper right there. And I think when I glue it on the page, I probably glue very top and very bottom and tuck behind it and then tuck in it. Again, same idea, layering. This was a piece of ephemera. It said something that annoyed me there. Put a thing over it, put a little piece of paper. These brown pieces don't have to be the paper in the end, but it might be cute with a little sticker on it or something. And I had them and they remind you, oh yeah, that's a tuck spot. Okay, again, they're getting small, right? Clocks, pattern, or uh, embossed, her, and a little piece of paper. And this one's not a pocket yet, but it could be when you glue it on, or it could be a little tiny journaling card to go in a pocket. This is the one that it was just a card like this, and I glued her on. So those are all my precious things I made from one pad. So if you don't have a lot of supplies in your stash, just know that you can be a junk journaler and a card maker and an ephemera maker. Just have a great time. Make messes and get in there. I'm going to put these all in one box now to keep them safe from the little missy. Oops, except this one I'll leave a stamp on and get these put away. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to watch Beth here on YouTube and check out Kathy on Instagram and see what she made. It's so fun to see what people come up with with a small pad. Every once in a while, I even make a journal with a six by six, but they're just so tiny and precious that I just hoard them. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.